Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, we are going to discuss one very interesting AWS data pipeline architecture and that is related to ETL automation with metadata management and job tracking. Okay, so this particular data pipeline design question was asked to me in one of my data engineering interview. First, let me show you the question and then we will discuss the approach and we will implement that particular data pipeline practically at the end okay so here let's try to understand what the interviewer asked i will just play this particular video i have masked the interviewer's face just for confidentiality purpose so let me here play this particular video with high volume so that you can listen so talking purely from an event based scenario so for example let's consider i am an s3 bucket and I have files coming at different intervals. So the schedule is not fixed, the amount of files are not fixed. So file sizes might be smaller, not big enough big files, but files can be smaller. So here my situation here is my SLA to my target database, that will be your SLA to responsible with all the transformation and blah blah blah. I have to reach within 30 minutes. The SLA is 30 minutes. So how do I drive an event driven solution which is cost optimized as well and which caters to all the aspects of whether you do a file tracking, you do an audit logging, you do a monitoring, everything should be covered within 30 minutes as well with the transformation. Then. Transformation you can consider minimal at this stage of uh, continuum. But this is the workflow that uh, I am looking for. What are different services will you think of for each and every single So, here, if you just try to understand the gist of the question, that is basically one ETL process we have to run where the schedule is not fixed. Any time the file can come, maybe at 10 a.m. one file is coming, at 10.15 another file is coming and then maybe at 11 a.m. directly another file is coming. So like that the files are coming, the file size is not big enough. We have to process the files and then load in destination system that can be some S3 file system or maybe for example Redshift or Snowflake, this kind of cloud data warehouse platform also possible. But this particular transformation and data load, this activity should be completed within 20 minutes or 30 minutes, something like that the value is given. That means it is kind of not exactly near real time, but almost near real time, we can say it is not a batch processing system. The SLA is very less time, that is within 20 minutes, the data should be available for business unit or the consumer. So that data pipeline we have to design and the very important aspect here what it is mentioned whether you do a file tracking, audit logging and all these things. That means apart from our core ETL pipeline design, we have to bring the audit functionality in our ETL system also which really helps us with respect to our analysis in future point of time, right? So how to capture all the logs of our ETL pipeline and bring the system? On that I am going to discuss today in this video, okay? So the architecture is pretty much very simple. As soon as the things are coming up that the scheduling interval is not fixed, the files are coming in S3, that means what you can think of that from S3, as soon as file get landed, you can trigger a lambda function based on S3 event notification and then that lambda can trigger a AWS glue job which can do all the processing or applying transformation and after doing that, it will load the data in Redshift or Snowflake, right? So this is the architecture which I already covered two years back, an automated data pipeline using Lambda, S3 and Glue, Big Data with Cloud Computing. So here if you see in this particular data pipeline, this can solve our requirement also. Because here we no need to have a fixed schedule interval, it can run in event driven manner and Lambda can trigger the glue job as soon as data is available in S3 and Glue can run concurrently if multiple files are coming in same time in S3. So all those things can be handled. So, this particular data pipeline can load the data to Redshift or Snowflake within 20 to 30 minutes. This is not a big deal. But here in this particular architecture which I explained earlier, here audit and file tracking these kind of functionalities are not available. So, we need to add that particular component in this data pipeline. And how we can do that? It is very simple. We can take help of DynamoDB for all the metadata storage of our ETL job, right? So, only thing what we need to do when the Lambda will trigger AWS glue job, Lambda should insert one row in the DynamoDB table also that this job started and some other metadata information about that job that this file it started processing, this is the time it started processing, this is the job ID and all these things. Okay, right? And once the glue job is finished, that time we need to update that same row that this is the end time, 
this is the logs or what is the status whether it is succeeded or failed this kind of information also we need to update in our DynamoDB table so how we can do that for that here I have already explained another video that build an automated serverless data lake using AWS Blue Lambda and CloudWatch and there I discuss this particular pattern that whenever blue job completes and based on that if you want to do something then the best option can be CloudWatch rule. In CloudWatch rule you can basically put that pattern that as soon as blue job state get changed then do some activity. Here in this video I basically showed that as soon as blue job completes it basically sends an SNS notification to a topic from their email get triggered to let the admin team or developer team know that the job is completed successfully right. Now instead of this particular SNS trigger what we can do as soon as blue job state get changed using CloudWatch rule we can trigger another lambda and then that particular lambda can update the DynamoDB table that particular row that for this particular job now this is ended this is the end time and this is the status whether it is succeeded failed something like that okay. So these two videos basically I can merge and I can bring up the solution. So here this particular architecture we can implement to solve the required problem okay. So here the files are getting landed anytime the S3 event notification will trigger lambda. The lambda will send to the glue job that this particular file you need to process glue will read from the S3 location that particular file and process that basically we can do using command line argument from lambda to glue that this S3 data you have to process and all which I already discussed in my previous video also and after processing glue can write the data in curated layer and when the lambda is triggering the glue job that time simultaneously it will write the metadata information in DynamoDB table also and once the glue job succeeded based on CloudWatch event another lambda will be triggered that lambda will update that particular metadata row that the job is succeeded failed or what is the state and what is the end time this kind of information it can update. So this way all the ETL metadata file tracking audit we can implement using DynamoDB. Why DynamoDB? If it is asked in interview it is very simple you can explain that it is serverless. We no need to think of software update or OS patching anything. AWS take care of all these things. It is scalable and it is very easy to use, very easy to integrate and that's why we can offer DynamoDB right. So this is the pretty much architecture. Now without any further delay I will directly jump into the implementation section. So as a first step what I will do I will create a DynamoDB table and the DynamoDB table I am providing this particular name the primary key for this DynamoDB table will be job name which is basically storing all the ETL metadata for our blue job right. So primary key I am keeping our blue job name and the sort key we are keeping as job run ID. So one particular job can be triggered multiple times maybe concurrently or different times in a day multiple times it can be triggered right. So that time what we need to do if we want to insert multiple rows for the same job name only primary key is not sufficient we need to put the sort key also and each time whenever a particular blue job gets triggered the job run id is unique with respect to that job. So sort key we are using as job run id so job name and job run id together is making a composite primary key okay right now here is our blue job what it is doing we are doing all the necessary imports it is a very simple blue job from lambda arguments it is reading the bucket name from where it need to read the data and the file which got landed in S3 for which the lambda triggered the blue job. So those two it is reading from system arguments and we are reading in file name and bucket name and then here we are building the complete input file path basically this particular S3 data glue will read and we are implementing here a very simple transformation because the interviewer also asks that the transformation is not heavy. All we are doing we are reading some CSV file whatever is landed in S3 landing zone and after maybe some business logic or something we are converting that to Parthia and we are writing in a separate S3 version as simple as that okay. So here after reading the data in CSV file format from that S3 zone we are repartitioning to one and writing in Parquet file format in this particular S3 bucket okay. So let me quickly create this particular bucket in AWS. So here this is my AWS management console I will open S3 and I will create the destination bucket where the glue will dump the data after processing okay. So here bucket name I am giving this one and I will create the bucket and let me do one more thing let me create this DynamoDB table also which will basically do all the file tracking audit login and all these things create table table name I am giving this one the primary key is our blue job name that, that can be string data type and this sort key can be job run ID not a problem okay 
and I will create the table. Everything I am doing in Node 13 here is here. Now these two are done. Our glue job basically will be triggered from AWS Lambda. So let me quickly create the glue job also. I will open AWS Management also in a new tab. And from here, I will go to AWS Glue. So here, I will go to ETL Jobs. And here Spark Script Editor I can choose. I can click on Create. And here this particular code you will be getting. I am just deleting and pasting my code. And then here the name I can give CSV to Parquet. And let me give YP first. Okay. So this is our job. Okay. I will give this same name in our Python file also. I will go to job details. Name is fine. Now type Spark. Let it be worker type. I am not changing. Request number of workers 10, let it be job bookmark not needed because it automatically process incrementally whatever S3 files coming, it is only reading those. So, incremental thing can be handled by Lambda itself. Script location, Python file name, all these things are fine. All I will do max concurrency. So, this one is currently 1, I will maybe increase this to 10. Okay, so it might happen that in S3 parallelly, 5 files are getting landed. So, 5 times the same blue job will be triggered, right? So that time concurrently it should able to run it. So maximum concurrency maybe I am keeping 10. Suppose in your case the S3 files can be 20 files at a time if they can get landed. Then you can increase the concurrency as per that. Okay. Right. So here I am keeping other properties unchanged. And here I am saving this. So here some error it is showing. Let's see what is that. I am role. I will choose our default role and I will save this. So here our glue job is ready. We don't need to do anything further here. Now let's go to our lambda. So this lambda will basically trigger our glue job based on S3 event modification. Again it is a very simple lambda if you see the glue job name. So glue job name in our case is yt csv to parquet. All I will do I will update the glue job name here. The start time I am capturing because in the audit table or dynamo db table we need to put that this time the glue job got triggered right. So here what we are doing. Based on S3 event, we are iterating, we are reading the file name and bucket name based on dictionary key value pair extraction technique. And then here we are printing that this is totally for debugging purpose. You can ignore this. From there, I am deriving the full S3 path and I am creating the Bototrip client for Glue. So this particular lambda will have Glue service role access so that it can easily trigger our Glue job. Okay. And here we are using Glue.start job run and then here we are providing our job name. So in our case, the job name is basically this one, right? So that one I am putting or directly I can put the variable name also, not a problem. Here instead of this, I am putting the variable name because here the blue job name already we have configured. And in the arguments, we are passing that what is the file it should pick up and from which source bucket it should pick up, okay? These two arguments we are sending from Lambda and the same two arguments we are capturing in our blue also as argument one and argument two, right? And then here we are printing the response also. Now this response from there some key value pairs we are extracting and we need to store them in DynamoDB for audit logging purpose also, right? So I have done json.loads here so that I can basically extract the response as nothing but dictionary. And here DynamoDB table I have already created using Boto3. So if you see table equal to dd.table and here I have given my DynamoDB table name. And this DD is nothing but Boto3 resource we have created for DynamoDB. I hope you can understand this Lambda should have DynamoDB access as well, right? And all we are doing from this Lambda is we are doing a put item operation. That way a new row will be inserted with the job name, job run ID, job state is Lambda has started the particular glue job, start timestamp, when the Lambda has started the job. So the start timestamp already we have captured here, right? So those informations we are doing, job message is job triggered by Lambda. Right, then which S3 file glue started processing? That one I am also capturing in our DynamoDB, that full S3 path, what we derived basically in the upper part here. Right, so all the metadata information pretty much we are capturing. So, all I will do, I will copy this particular lambda code and I will quickly create this particular lambda. Okay, so I'll open AWS lambda and help group to create function. And yt demo lambda loop. 
okay python environment maybe i can choose 3.8 not a problem and i'll create the function okay so here this is our code i will paste that here and i will deploy this code okay all i will do now i will give the proper permission to this particular lambda role so here i will click on add permission attach policy so s3 full access i will give if it is needed then apart from that blue service role access i need to give so that lambda can trigger our blue job okay and apart from that dynamo db it will store all the metadata information so to write or read from dynamo db dynamo db full access also i am providing okay right so pretty much our this particular lambda role wise it is ready now all i will do i will go to general configuration and i will edit this timeout i will increase for safety side to maybe 50 seconds and i will save this one okay right so here now as a next step i need to add the trigger so here already i have created my destination bucket right where blue will write the data after duration i need to create a source bucket also where the files are basically getting landed right so here i will create the bucket and here i will give the name source yt demo lambda blue okay and here i will create this one so this is our source bucket basically from her lambda will be triggered so i will click on add trigger and here i will go to s3 and here bucket i will search for and here all object create event only i want to send and i acknowledge that in that same s3 location i will not write the data otherwise it will be infinite loop and i will add this particular one okay so with this our lambda which is basically triggering our blue job that is ready along with that our dynamo db also ready right now all i need to do that once the blue job gets completed what i need to have i need to have a lambda which will be triggered based on cloudwatch event and it will update the particular row in dynamo db like for example when we are triggering the lambda or blue job from there we are inserting all this metadata information right like for example job region job time job account all this information will be filled up once the blue job complete whether it is success or failed we don't know but that will come from cloudwatch event okay right so in cloudwatch event job name and job run id will be there so these two are basically our composite primary key not taken so these two we can use to update our dynamo db okay right so let's see our lambda which will do that activity so this update lambda is basically used to update the metadata information once the blue job complete so here it is a very simple lambda from cloudwatch event we are printing the event first we are doing all the necessary imports obviously we need to create the resource for dynamo db pointing to our table and from that event we are extracting all the necessary information and what is the current time that also we are extracting and in this particular event if the job name is this particular one in our case the job name is this one right so here if this is the job name all we are doing we are updating the information how we are updating for updation purpose we need to provide the key primary key right otherwise what will happen that all the rows might be updated that is not a good practice so what we are doing job name and job run id these are the composite key and we are setting job message job severity update time stamp job time job region job state job account all this information we are extracting from the cloudwatch event and we are updating using this lambda okay so all i will do i will create this particular lambda also okay i am going little fast here because these kind of things already i discussed several times in my previous video update lambda dynamo yt and here i will choose the execution environment as python 3.8 and i'll create the function okay so here what i will do i will paste my lambda code which is basically handling the update part and i will deploy this okay now obviously this lambda will update the information in dynamo db so for that it need to have the dynamo db role so all i will do first as part of general configuration i will increase the timeout little bit and apart from that as part of permission i will add the dynamo db access okay
grant permission attach policy dynamo db full access i am adding here so it is added now here if you see that this particular lambda just now we developed this will be triggered from cloudwatch the first lambda was getting triggered from landing there right this will be triggered from cloudwatch so let's configure this particular part so we need to have cloudwatch pattern right so it is very simple you can get it from aws documentation that the source should be aws glue and if the glue job state get changed or job run status update then the lambda should be triggered okay so this is the cloudwatch rule pretty much simple i will open the cloudwatch now and i will set up the configuration okay so i'll go to cloudwatch and here i will go to rules and it will take me to the event bridge and i'll create the rule rule name demo yt lambda blue okay and then default let it be not a problem so here this particular part others as it is let it be not a problem okay all i will do here i will choose creation method custom pattern and in custom pattern i will paste this one okay then i'll go to next and which aws service is target once the glue job status get changed we need to trigger lambda right so lambda is basically our destination and what is the function the function in our case is basically which one let me just check i think this one yeah this one so this is the lambda name i will copy this one and i will put that in function name right and i'll click on next next and i will create the rule okay so this way our this particular second lambda will be triggered based on cloudwatch event if i refresh this screen here you will see the cloudwatch trigger is added or event bridge trigger is added okay so here see event bridge cloudwatch event trigger is added for our first lambda is trigger button okay right now we are ready to see the demo so all i will do i will open our dynamo db table and i will click on explore table items currently nothing is there and this is our blue script all i will do i will click on job run monitoring just to see whether the glue job is getting triggered or not so currently here all the jobs whatever information i earlier i ran those are available the job name which i tested is csv to park b but for our this particular demo the job name on which we are working is yt csv to park b right so we'll see whether it is coming here in the job monitoring section or not okay and as soon as we will upload the file in our source bucket the lambda should trigger this particular job and in DynamoDB it should insert a metadata also. So let's test it out. So here I am having some CSV files. First, let me put one particular CSV file in source location and I will click on upload. Okay. As soon as it is uploaded, let's see our source lambda got triggered or not or it failed for some reason. I can click on monitor section and I can click on view logs in CloudWatch. So here see just now at 9.39 am one event got generated and here pretty much there is no such error we can see the file name setosa.csv only we uploaded that it is coming. So now what should happen now we should see a entry in our DynamoDB table as metadata okay. So let's refresh and see here the complete metadata is available this is the job name this is the glue metadata job account job message job triggered by lambda if you want to know what file the glue job is processing so here s3 file key is available here you can clearly see this is the bucket and this is the file it is processing so let's see whether our glue job is started or not so if i refresh my this particular console so here you can see yt csp to park key this particular glue job now state is running that means our glue job has consumed this particular file and it started processing. So this way, if all the files and metadata information get captured, it will be very helpful for you to debug and do further analysis in future because all the metadata information, file level tracking, you can have here, right? So this is the start time when the glue job is started. And once the glue job will end, that time will update the update time also. You can compare start time and end time and you can understand how much time your glue job is taking, right? So all these informations can be handled by our this particular metadata capture property. And let's wait for some time. Once the glue job state will change to success, the expectation is it should throw an event to CloudWatch based on that lambda should be triggered. And based on that, it should update the DynamoDB. So currently in our DynamoDB table, here we cannot see update timestamp, right? And here we see that the job state is started lambda. 
so we need to see that the job should be completed and all this information should be coming here so we wait for that the job state currently it is started but once it is completed either it is succeeded or failed those things should be updated here so we will observe the event also so here see our blue job is complete now the expectation is based on cloudwatch event this particular lambda should have been triggered so let's see we will go to monitor section i am just showing you the logs just for exploration purpose or if we face some issue we can debug it cloudwatch logs are really handy for aws lambda debugging so here no logs came yet uh, let's wait for some time so here event with cloudwatch event if you see here once blue job status gets changed this lambda should be triggered right so ideally it should work let's see so here see a new lambda event came at 9.42 currently it is 9.40 pm that means it is just now came in real time and here in logs we cannot see any error so now if i refresh my dynamodb this particular row should be updated the job message is job triggered from lambda the job state is started it should be showing succeeded or something like that just i will refresh this and see here it got updated okay job run id is same blue job metadata is keeping same job account earlier we had no information currently it is there job message see job run succeeded okay job state is succeeded earlier it was lambda has triggered something like that sort right but currently we can clearly see job state also got updated so from this particular metadata information itself we can understand that this particular s3 file which is coming from source is processed successfully and if you want to know what is the end time this is the end time okay at 4 9 it started and it got updated or ended at 4 22 okay so this is the start time and end time of our blue job right so this way all the file tracking audit and monitoring we can do using dynamodb now maybe in source system parallelly multiple files are coming that time the blue job will run concurrently because we have increased the concurrency right and it should process and write the data in parquet file format in our destination system so here if i refresh here you can see this is the parquet data even you can read this parquet data using s3 file select property also so let me show you that maybe action query with s3 select i can do this is basically parquet file so i will choose json and maybe limit 10 i can do and if i run the query here you will see that same our id is data set only in parquet file format is written here right so that means blue has successfully processed and written the data in our destination system in parquet file format right cool so we have seen the demo with one single file now suppose two files are getting landed parallelly farsicolor.csv and virginica.csv okay so two s3 events will be coming from there lambda will trigger our blue job two times from there two more rows should be available in our dynamodb so total three rows right so all these things we should see so let's refresh and here see currently it is three rows okay job name is same but each time job id is different so that's why i have kept job id as short key so that way job name and job id together will make the composite primary key and if you want to see for which files the jobs are running here this file names are farsicolor.csv and virginica.csv for those our job got started even you can go and check in blue job monitoring section here you should see that two jobs are running okay so here see currently two jobs are running okay as soon as their run will complete here two directories will be created and as the blue job state will change it will throw the event in cloudwatch from there our update lambda will be triggered and that update lambda will update these two rows currently the job message is job triggered by lambda but once the blue job will successfully process the message it will throw job run succeeded something like that okay right so let's wait for some time to complete this particular job so here currently you can see both blue job got completed so ideally our second lambda should have been triggered by this time and here these two files what it was processing virginica.csv and varsicolor.csv for which we had no update time or the job state was only started now it should be job is succeeded something like that okay right so here see here currently one job it got updated succeeded but another one is still not updated let's wait for some time and see here currently all the job state is succeeded okay so that means from here we can understand that all the file processing are successful okay right 
and even you can monitor the field event also for example i can write something here so because i am writing this the glue job will fail right because this is neither a variable nor some string right so i will save this particular one and let me show you one field event also how it is getting captured so here i will go to source and currently we are having three files for these three files in our destination system successfully glue processed also now intentionally i will upload one particular or maybe wrong file okay or some file which is not correct because we have disturbed the glue code also so here you can see that sorry in the file got open yeah so this is the file just now what we have written in s3 just to observe the field event also let's go to our glue job now we should have one extra entry where the job triggered by lambda is showing the file due to which our lambda got triggered is this particular one what our glue job started processing but here this time our glue job should fail right so let's see whether the glue job got triggered or not yes the glue job is triggered so ideally this time the glue job should be failed and what should happen that in this particular DynamoDB table earlier it was saying succeeded now this time it should show failed once the glue job fails okay so here you can see our glue job is failed so again it will throw that particular event to CloudWatch from that CloudWatch it will trigger our this particular update lambda and here this particular row should be updated let's see so here currently still it is not updated yet let's wait for a couple of seconds it is happening almost in real time so not a problem and parallelly i will check whether in lambda is there any issue or not so i will open logs in cloudwatch so this is the logs and here i cannot see any error so i did it should be updated So here you can see just now the event came and here see it is error okay so ideally we should see this particular same in our DynamoDB metadata table also so here you can see that this is showing error the job state is changed to fail okay right so from where you can understand easily that here job message also is showing syntax error show you that syntax error invalid syntax yt csv to parquet at line 15 and here if you see at line 15 only we added this misinformation or wrong variable right so this is how using dynamodb you can track all the file processing and complete metadata information and i hope this particular architecture you understood these kind of questions are frequently asked in system design interview round which is generally taken after technical round one and round two okay right so this is all for my this video all the codes i'll be providing in the description box or in the comment section you can check there and if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you haven't subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you for watching